Schmovement. I'm <clears throat> sorry. Schmovement is one of the most important factors, if not the. Get it? My name. The most important factor to your success in Crab Champions. Having crazy high damage is great, but if you stop moving, you'll still get overrun. There's just too many enemies and too many projectiles. But on the flip side, you can have really bad damage. But if you're avoiding 98, 99% plus of all incoming damage because you have the movement on lockdown, you can probably outlast almost any fight, even a boss fight. People have beaten this game, to my knowledge, without a single damage increasing item. Calm, cool, and collected, that's the name of the game for the movement. And yeah, there's movement perks, right? Cough, stamina, cough, speed demon, cough, cough, cough. But those ultimately don't help that much compared to just having a good idea of what you're gonna be doing. So instead of doing a build guide, because those are the two items you would wanna get, I'm gonna be going into more of the habits you wanna be building, the, the mindset, what you're thinking of when you're playing this game in order to, to continue to move around and play the game optimally. You can control the flow of the enemies with tools that you have. It took me personally well over 50 plus hours to feel like I have any of this on lock, so none of this is gonna come easy. It is repetition. And even now, I'm not playing as much as I used to when the game first come out. came out. Uh, so yeah, even now, like if I fire up a run, I kind of have to get going, get it, get it, get a little warm up almost. You gotta get used to all of the crazy inputs. It's not that crazy, but, but you are inputting a lot. Anyway, I digress. And before we get started fully, Guys, my name is Furnace, your second favorite F4, the number one source for all things Crab Champions. If you like this game, throw me a subscription, like the video, it helps me out, be on the lookout for more content around this game. And before we get into it as well, I want to clarify, I'm coming at this from the angle of a solo run. You get going in co-op, there's so many opponents, or there's so many uh, teammates, right? You have all of your squad for the enemies to focus on, it just gets chaotic, and yeah, you need good movement. And yeah, a lot of this will still apply, but it, it's a little bit different. You kind of just go crazy. Anyways, let's get into it. Tip number one, quite simple. You got to memorize enemy attack patterns. That's all there is to it. This naturally comes with repetition. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to hear me saying that a lot. But as you play more, you'll start to notice that there is a full arsenal of potential attacks. Some enemies like basic crabs and basic ants. They only have one or two things, a basic melee, a straightforward projectile, and the ant does the little thing, and then shoots it forward, and you know it's coming. Really easy. Then on the other end, we've got champion level, and even elites and bosses, they have at least three, maybe five attacks, and it kind of depends on your positioning. But over time, you will start to memorize these things. You're going to need to. It's hard to understand how to beat a game and how to avoid damage if you don't have the incoming damage memorized. You gotta know what's coming at you. And eventually, everything can kind of be boiled down to really only a handful of attacks and patterns so far in the game. That's not a diss at the game. That's just what it looks like. There are various different projectiles that are smaller balls, larger balls. They got in an arc. They got in a circle from the player. They fire a blast towards you like a cluster. You get the point. But you know what those are, you know which enemies do them, and now you can start getting into the more important things. How do we actually avoid them? So that brings us to our second tip. Sliding, dashing, which is the same as double jump, and ADS, aiming down your sights. These are all your best friend. This is the trifecta of mechanics for Crab Champions. There's other things, surely, but this is the holy trinity. This is your bread and butter. You gotta use them early, you gotta use them often. As a reminder, sliding is the... the slide <laughs> I don't really need to explain that very much you press shift as a default and you kind of slide you can slide backwards you can slide forwards not left and right but forward and backward this increases your movement speed it also allows you to dodge things to some extent but the real dodging is the dash the double jump you jump once to gain height and a little bit of forward or backwards movement or even sideways and then the second one is an aggressive mid-air dash that is the dodge and that is what takes full advantage of the third one, ADS, aiming down your sights. If you're on the ground, scuttling around, you aim down your sights, you, it zooms a little bit, better accuracy. If you're in midair from a dash, one of your jumps you haven't dashed yet, or after your dash, doesn't matter, you go slow motion. As a player, no one else goes slow-mo, just you as a player go slow-mo, and it throws off the enemy attacks. That's all there is to it. They predict your position, and if you were gonna land over here, but then you slow motion in the middle, Attack flies past you, 
and then you get some nice shots on them. Plus, again, it zooms, you got better accuracy, and you're good to go. Using a combination of these three things, pretty much non-stop, is what I mean when I say shmovement. Okay? That's all it is. Simply scuttling around, walking around at the base crab speed, even if you get speed demon leveled up a couple times, simply doesn't do it. You're a slow target, and you're not dodging, you're easy to predict, you will get hit. Even at the easiest difficulty, called easy, you will not win if all you're doing is walking around. Actually, that might be a fun challenge video for me in the future. We're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and write that one down, but I'm not confident, I'm not confident. It'll be a fun challenge, but I'm not confident that you can actually succeed without utilizing sliding, dashing, and your slow-mo ADS. Yeah, so wrapping this point up, you gotta be comfortable sliding, dashing, and ADSing to maneuver around enemy attacks and around the islands. Speaking of the islands, that's our third tip. Just like you gotta memorize the enemy attacks, you gotta memorize the islands. And I know that's probably even harder, to be honest. There's not that many enemies and not that many attacks. But there are a lot of islands and we're gonna get more. You know, you play through 10 islands. I believe the actual number of unique islands might be about 10 per biome. That's 30 islands that you have to be aware of. And not just, oh yeah, I kind of like this one. It's kind of open. Okay, it's open. Where are you rotating? Are you taking massive loops around the outside? Or are you hugging an inner pillar? Are you going back and forth in uh, a long corridor type section? Is it a challenge island? Or is it a flawless island? Or is it perhaps just a horde? Because a horde island, you can just run away. And if you're idea is, hey, I'm low on health, it's a horde island, all I gotta do is survive for 50 seconds, where are you going? Do you know where you need to go? If you're just going in there blind, which you will be at the beginning, unfortunately, it's gonna be hectic, it's gonna be brutal, but I, I keep saying this, but over time, you will memorize all the islands and you'll have an idea in your head, okay, this is a spike, uh, spike strip, or spike strike, what is it even called? You know what I'm saying, the spikes come up the ground. You gotta keep rotating, you gotta keep your distance, stay far away. Same with a lot of the challenges, really. They just force you to create space. So you gotta go to the outside. Do you know where the outside is? Are you running into the lava? That's a no-no. Do you know where the lava... This is all lava biome, but there's spots where you gotta jump over the lava. You get what I'm saying. Memorize the damn islands, just like the attack patterns, and you will have an idea going into the island, and then, using your knowledge of the enemy attacks, you can adjust as you go. Oh, we are rambling, ladies and gentlemen, but my last main tip for Schmovement Crab Champions is uh, more of a philosophical one. Be patient, man. Just be patient. Greed does not get you what you want in this game. This is a golden example of easier said than done. I know. I get greedy all the time. It's why I lose way more often than I should. Randomly, I'll just get greedy. But what happens when you get greedy is you stop moving. You see that health bar is down to a sliver on that boss on 30. It's nightmare. You're almost done. So you stop moving, you start trying to get those last few hits, and then you let your guard down, and you get hit by the big attacks. All you really had to do was keep focused, don't get greedy, one or two more combinations of dashing and sliding, reposition, get the last few hits from safety, but you got greedy. I've been told patience is a virtue, and uh, I could not agree more than in this game. You will be swiftly punished if you aren't clued in to all of these tips. You need to know the enemy attacks, you need to know the island layouts, and you need to utilize those three main mechanics, sliding, dashing, and slow-mo ADS. And I know a couple of dual wield weapons like the shoddy and the pistols, you can't ADS. Massive uh, downside to those weapons in my opinion, but point still remains. Yeah, that's all I got for this movement guide, this movement idea. It's not really, I mean, it's a guide. It's a guide. We'll call it a guide. Call it a guide. Uh, if you like the video, like the video. If you like Crab Champions and you like my annoying voice, then subscribe to the channel because I will keep pumping out guides, dev updates, fun challenge gameplay, and anything else with this game. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. See you later.